Okay, this is a, hey gang. It's a rather impromptu. Um, I just went out and grabbed some stuff on the truck. I had a thought the other day. I've been meaning to do a video on um, some control circuit stuff. Actually, I'm going to throw two into one if I have time. If not, I'll edit it. I hate editing. That's why I like to do it all at once. But anyway, um, I want to talk about uh, low voltage control systems um, and troubleshooting. You know, and as many times as I've run across this kind of stuff, it still bites me in the ass from time to time. Um, you'll go out to a house, and the customer's complaint will be, uh, they'll say, Mike, the, the, the blower's coming on, but I've got no cold air. Nothing's coming out. And you'll walk outside, and the outdoor unit's not on. And it has 240 volts, and, and you start troubleshooting it. And, and at first, you might think it's the, the contactor or something, because you can take a meter and put um, you know, your meter on each side of the 24-volt coil, and you have nothing. You put it to chassis ground on one side, and you have nothing, or two or three volts. And you put it the other side, and you have 24 volts. And of course, you know, it's one thing when I'm looking at it on paper, and my brain automatically, okay, this is the, this is the problem. Blah, 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 blah. But when I'm out there, it takes my brain a couple of minutes to say, oh, something's open. That's what it is. And then I realize the common line is open uh, somewhere because I actually have 24 volts. It's just not completing the ground circuit back to close a contactor. So uh, the the thing that you're going to run across in this situation is, so if you do that, typically one of two things has happened. Uh, the common line is open because you still have 24 volts on one side, but it's not closing the contactor. Or um, or you have a switch that is tripped somewhere. And we're going to talk about, I want to talk about wet switches or float switches today. Now I've got three different varieties here with me today. And I'm just going to open up a couple of these. I hardly ever have to change these things, but every once in a while you'll get, or hardly ever have anyone request to have one installed. But you never know what you need on the truck. There's a, a couple different varieties of them. And this is probably one of the most common ones you'll run across. It's a little, uh, it's a two wire jobby. And basically it's just a relay. You've got the relay built in here. This clips on the side of your water pan. And the float switch here sits down inside your pan. So if you get a little water in your pan, your emergency pan, it, uh, it'll pick up and cut off the condenser outside. Typically, it's probably designed, depends on how they hang the pan. If they hang it this low enough, it might trip even though you have the emergency pan draining. Others might set it up so if the emergency pan backs up, it will cut off the condenser. Purpose being, you don't want to flood the house. Um, something goes wrong, so you can It'll shut off the outdoor condenser. The water drains back down. It may open back up. So sometimes it may be an intermittent problem. Um, but this one's made by uh, Beckett Corporation. And it's a simple little two-wire, pretty easy to install. And we have, uh, set this one aside. This one's uh, called Safety Switch, model SS1. And I see these installed uh, quite a bit. Let me see if I can get this one out. And there's a variety of different ones kind of like this. And get it out without tearing the package. Too badly. And this one has, uh, this one is good for, uh, typically it's probably used more on upflow, but you can use this wherever. Screw your, your fitting into your, your secondary drain. And it has, uh, let's see which way is which here. Probably this way here. You can slide it in, glue your pipe in, or whatever. And you can either cap the back side if you want to cap the back side, or you could probably pipe the uh, pipe the back side out if you want to run your secondary drain out. So this could be used as a secondary drain or in an upflow uh, situation. You could have it capped. And what it is, it has a float switch on it as well. And I think this one's a little magnetic float switch. And it sits down inside, uh, sits down inside here. 
It's also a little two-wire. You just run the wires between the common. Uh, just wire, you know, break the common and, and splice it between. So this finishes the common loop. And uh, float pops up and we'll break the connection. If the drain slowly drains down, you know, it it'd probably close back up. So that gives you a little, little uh, neat little safety switch. It's a good deal. And here's a more interesting one that I picked up. And I, I got this, and I've been meaning to try and sell this one. And if I can get this open, it's sealed, isn't it? It is totally sealed. Dang it. I'll show you the picture of it instead of busting it open. But basically, it's the same thing as this, but a smaller design. And the tube is actually clear. So this screws directly into your, uh, <coughs> into your, this is made basically for upflows is what it is, where you can't have a secondary drain coming out. You just need to shut off. And it has a, uh, a little light sensor on here. And I can't tell if this is a two or three wire. I've never wired one up. We'll see. On the back here, da -da -da, switch. Looks like it's showing the uh, breaking the Y connection is what it looks like it's doing here. Breaking the Y connection looks like. But my eyes are a foggy there. It's got a little reset switch on top, or, or test switch, I should say. And uh, I guess the little light shines down in there, and it detects water in the pipe and breaks it. So and I've never actually seen one of these installed, but with such a cool little switch, and it fits in such compact space, I thought it would be good to have on a truck. If I had to put one, because you know sometimes those closets uh, are pretty tight. The another one you're going to run across, and I've never, ins I don't think I've installed one, and is an actual wet switch as opposed to a float switch. Um, so it looks like a round disc, looks like a hockey puck, it's about that big around. It's a three wire, so I'm assuming there's a power, and then it breaks the common ground somewhere. And they typically will put these on an upflow, and they will put it down under the filter base on the concrete floor, down where the return is down there. So that way, if the unit freezes up, or if the pan rusts or anything like that, the water gets down on the floor, it will trip the wet switch. It has a little felt pad on the bottom of it. And uh, I don't like them because they're, they take forever to dry, <laughs> so I don't like them. They do a good job. Um, but you pick it up, you can take a hair dryer to the base, dry it off, it's got a little reset button on it. But it's basically the same purpose. So sometimes you'll pull your hair out trying to figure out what is going on if you can't see the wet switch and uh, or you forget about wet switches. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. You know, if you have if you have no power to the outside unit <coughs> and everything else seems to be working okay, and you can manually fire it over and check for voltage on one side. If you have twenty four volts on one side of the contactor, then it's a pretty good bet you have a wet switch problem or an open, an open line because of something else, or a float switch, I should say. So um, let me stop here. I don't think I've talked 10 minutes, but um, I'll stop here, and then I'll do another segment on my next little project. Thanks.